All right, we're changing uh, the front and rear diff fluid today. This happens to be on a Dakota. Uh, same principle for pretty much any vehicle that needs this service. I'm uh, just going to do a general how-to. Um, you have to check your owner's manual or online for what kind of fluid your vehicle calls for. Uh, this particular one we're using Synthetic 7590. Uh, pretty straightforward. We're going to come underneath the truck. We've already done the rear. We're doing the front now. So you'll find uh, your differential cover, which is kind of hard to see, I guess. But um, this one has 13 millimeter bolts. So we're going to go ahead, get a ratchet with a 13 mil, and just take all the bolts off going around the cover. All right. So you got all the bolts out. Uh, get a pan underneath it. And you might a screwdriver or a hammer or something to kind of tap on the housing to get it to break loose because there's going to be it's just going to be stuck to it whether it be silicone or a gasket or whatnot. So we're going to try to get it to break free. Of course, the back side was easier. You might have to get a screwdriver or something in there, tap on it a little bit more. For fuck's sakes. Oh, it's coming off. There's also sometimes a little slot in the axle right here, which this one has, and I'm going to use a screwdriver to kind of pry on the cover to get it off since it's being stubborn. Now you want to kind of keep an eye on the fluid and see if it's all milky or watery when it comes out. Because if it is, there's a good chance you might have bearing damage due to poor lubrication. I'm just going to work it around. Break the silicone free. Let it drain for a second and then pull the cover out. All right, so I was having issues getting this cover off and then realized that this one has a hose breather right here. Not sure if you can see it, but there's a little fitting coming off the cover with a hose that attaches to it. So you got to unhook that first. And then, then you pull it down. Uh, a lot of breathers are just a little rubber plug on the front of the cover. So I just wasn't used to seeing that. So now we're going to pull the cover down, clean it up. One thing I probably should have mentioned before, um, when, when you're checking to do this, some vehicles you don't have to pull the cover to do this. Um, you'll want to look on both sides of the differential housing. Sometimes there's a lower plug and an upper plug. Usually there's square drive or an Allen socket to get them out. Um, the lower one would be the drain and the upper would be the fill. So in that case, you would just loosen the lower one, pull the plug out, let all the fluid drain. Put the plug back in, then take the top one out and uh, fill it until oil comes out. That's much easier, but this is going to be uh, pertaining to vehicles that require pulling the cover. So we got the cover off. Um, you'll want to look up in there, make sure there's no broken teeth or any pitting. Um, there should be a magnet somewhere in the housing. With, you want to see if there's any major... Uh, chunks or shavings uh, make sure you uh, get a rag and pull all that oil out I like to get as much oil out as I can and then uh, we're gonna take and uh, there's a couple ways you can do this you can use like a razor blade scraper or some fine grit sandpaper or emery cloth or uh, a, a grinder with a sanding disc on it or I got a, a drill with a wire brush um, don't want to use anything too abrasive and and deform this at all but we're just going to take and use this and uh, clean i'm going to wipe the oil off first so it doesn't spray all over and make a mess and then we're going to clean all the silicone off of it get the cover all clean and dry and then do the same for the housing all right took the wire brush to the cover got all the silicone cleaned off now i'm going to take a little bit of either carb clean or brake clean whatever you got and uh just spray it a little bit Get all the rubber shavings out of there, wipe it down, get it nice and dry with a rag so it's all prepped to put back on. 
All right, the cover's all cleaned up. Now we're gonna go down and do the same thing on the differential. Uh, you gotta be careful. This, this housing is made out of aluminum, so you don't wanna use anything too abrasive and damage the surface. Um, as you can see, it's not very easy to get at. I've got the steering rack and the sway bar in the way. It was even a challenge to get the cover out. Um, so like I said, you can use a, a wire brush or a, a razor blade scraper. Just try and get as much of this off as you can without damaging the housing. And when I'm doing the axle housing cleaning, I try to take a rag or something and put it over the ring gear. Try to cover as much stuff as I can so when you're scraping or grinding or whatever you're doing to get this RTV off, you're not getting a bunch of shavings and junk in your uh, housing because that can get in the bearings and the gears and cause issues. All right, the housing's all cleaned up. Got everything wiped off the ceiling surface and wiped out of the housing. We're gonna go ahead and put our sealant on. Um, depending on application, so then depends on where you put it. Um, sometimes you put it on the cover itself. Other times you put it on the housing doesn't really matter. Um, I'm gonna put it on the diff cover just because it's a little easier to get at. And uh, I use this Right Stuff gasket maker. Uh, it's oil resistant and I've never had it leak on me. It hasn't let me down yet. So we use it at my work all the time. It's pretty good sealant. So we're gonna go go ahead. I go a little overkill. I go between each uh, bolt hole and around the bolt hole because I don't like my stuff leaking. So. We're gonna do that right now. All right, there it is with the silicone on it. Um, I'm actually gonna go one step further just because I'm real picky and I'm gonna smear it around. So I got 100% sealing contact and then we're gonna uh, put it back on. So there we go, it's all smeared. Overkill is underrated. This is not gonna leak. All right, we've got all the bolts in. Um, finger tight I'm gonna go right now and just cinch them down lightly with a, a ratchet not gonna reef on them yet um, just gonna get them snug while the RTV tacks up a little bit so that way when we go to do our final tightening uh, it's a little more uh, firm and acts kind of like a gasket um, you want to try you don't want to go start at one bolt and go all the way around because it's just gonna ooze all of the uh, sealant out at the very end uh, I try to do either a cross star pattern or do like the two bottom ones, then the two top, then the two side, then the two other side, and then uh, your four corners. So I guess it doesn't really matter, but I try not to go around just in a clockwise direction. I feel like that doesn't seal as well. All right, all the bolts are cinched down. It's been sitting for probably five minutes or so. Uh, the RTV is tacked up a bit. Now we're going to go ahead and give them the final tightening. Uh, you'll want to check and see what the torque is for these bolts. Uh, they're all different depending on the size. And uh, obviously these ones thread into aluminum, so you don't want to really reef on them. Uh, mine are a 13 millimeter head, so I would guess they're in the ballpark of somewhere around 15 to 20 foot pounds. I'm just going to use my 3 8 ratchet and snug them up by hand. I've done enough where I know what it should feel like but I recommend torquing them. Okay, they're all tight. If you've done it right, you should have uh, some goo oozing out all the way around. Let you know you got a good seal. Uh, now we're good, good to put, uh, well actually, I would leave this sit for about five to 10 minutes or, or maybe even up to a half hour to let the RTV silicone uh, cure. Uh, and then we're good to put the oil in as you can see, the fill hole on this one's not in a very easy to get to spot. Um, so, you may have to get uh, some sort of hose or something to put on the end of your container to reach in there. Also, don't forget to hook up the breather tube if you had one. I don't know if you can see it. Somewhere up there. Yeah, right there. Uh, just a little tidbit, um, if you're super meticulous like me, um, like this is the front diff, when you have the cover off, um, 
it, like this is the front diff, I would jack up the rear axle uh, to get the maximum amount of fluid out possible so it runs out the front here uh, and then let it drain for probably about a half hour if you really want to get every last drop out. But we got everything tight, oil's in, good to go. You want to fill it up um, until fluid's either running out of the fill hole or pretty close to it. You want to be able to at least reach in and, and grab it with the tip of your finger. Um, otherwise it's not enough. So if you get it pretty close to there, you're good to go. It's all keyed up and you're done.